me entertain you let me make you smile let me entertain you Welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, episode 83, the Friendship Edition. I'm Mark Sargent, and joining us in just a second is your host, Patricia Steer. Hello, and welcome to the show, and thanks, Mark, for the introduction. And we have a great show lined up for you where we're just going to have a good time, talk about Flat Earth, and uh, pretty much the sky's the limit, because we all know it is, when it comes to topics on the show. And uh, let's welcome all the guests in no particular order. We'll go with ladies first, with Sasha Sparkle, Orphan Red. Hey, how are you doing? And thanks for being on the show, Sasha. Hi, Patricia. Thank you so much for having me. Love the background, love the flowers, and there's probably 33 of them, and we'll be counting them as the show <laughs> continues. <laughs> We're going to go up next with Nathan Oakley, who's here. Uh, Nathan, thank you for being on the show. It's a pleasure to be here. And we've got Bob Zanadude here. How are you, Bob? I am doing wonderful, Patricia. Thank you for having me on the show today. It's going to be fun. And Antonio Suberitz is here. Antonio, how are you? I'm really well, thank you very much. Is that one of your paintings behind you? It is. It's just, uh, it's not a finished painting, it's just something I've uh, I left. I thought, ah, it's okay for now. So right. this is there drying. Well, we've got um, Q and A going, and maybe we'll get to some questions. I hope we will at some time later on in the show. Questions, comments, you know, it could be on any topic at all regarding the flat Earth or otherwise. Um, David Weiss may be joining us. Uh, he's supposed to, but he's also driving somewhere, so he may not. Um, I don't know. I think this is going to be free for all, I, I guess as long as we don't talk over each other, because Google Hangouts work funny that way, and drowns the other person out. Uh, do you think that we should start discussing a little bit with uh, maybe the whole, um, well, he's being called Black Dot, uh, the validation boy uh, thing that went on? Does anybody want to start on that and what your feeling is on that? And Bob, maybe that would be something that you might want to address a little bit, because of course it was something that affected you and the Globusters channel and everybody. Um, sure, I'll, I'll go ahead and start out with it. Um, yeah, if uh, people are not aware of it, uh, Validation Boy kind of came out with a hit piece on, well, all of us at one point, and, uh, um, and then it kind of got very personal with me um, for, you know, whatever reason, I don't know, but uh, uh, my feelings were hurt, um, to say the least. There's David. <laughs> Hello. Hey, David Weiss. Oh, my God, man. New York City, this place is crazy. <laughs> All right, sorry, go ahead, Bob. Awesome. Okay. So anyway, it all kind of started out with uh, uh, a video that he did uh, a few nights ago. Um, and when I saw it, I was kind of taken aback because I was a little bit amazed at, uh, you know, what he was saying in it. And I sent him a message and uh, told him, I said, you know, we, we really need to talk about this. And uh, he didn't respond. I sent him another message and said, yes, can, you know, we need to talk. And finally he responded to me. And uh, so... Uh, when I called him, I said, look, you know, Sean, I, I don't really know what issue you have with um, Flat Earth Asshole, but um, I have to tell you, I feel like since you're my friend, I need to tell you this, that it's really not making you look very good. 
and uh, you may want to kind of you know reconsider what you're doing here. I said I certainly don't want to tell you, you know, what to put on your channel or what not to put on your channel, but um, I just said that you know it seems to me that this was uh, an outright attack on several people that really had uh, have no animosity against you whatsoever, and. He also, um, one of the other accusations he made was that uh, Jaron, when I had him and CD on the show, that Jaron basically had called me and had instructed me to uh, have CD on um, so that CD could upstage him. And I'm like, that's ridiculous because Jaron lets me run the Globebusters channel and uh, CD is one of my favorite uh, people. He's not a flat earther, but I don't care. He's a good friend. He's a good researcher. Um, and I said, I really liked you. So... Um, I wanted you both to be on the show, and, and I thought it was uh, going to be a really great show. Well, anyway, it, it kind of deteriorated from there, and uh, honestly, I was really quite surprised that uh, uh, he made that hit piece, and, and you know, the great majority of it was, was massively untrue, um, completely over-exaggerated, and, and I just never understood it. So uh, I haven't responded to him. Um, I simply unsubbed and uh, really haven't uh, had anything to do with him since. Um, there it is. <laughs> How many in the uh, in the group here thought it was an April Fool's Day joke when the first video came out? Since it was on April Fool's Day, I certainly did. I was, and then later I was hoping it was. Yeah, I certainly did. Yeah, uh, it would have been a brilliant April Fool's Day joke, but I would have thought that Bob would have been in on it. Uh, and then when the second video came out, I thought he's either really, really, really a great actor, or this is not an April Fool's Day joke. So that's interesting and sad. And uh, I guess another one bites the dust. It may be a new phrase like pulled a tiger dan, pulled a validation boy might be a new phrase. And I have nothing against him. I really liked what he did. I wanted him to come on my show. Um, that obviously is not going to happen now. But uh, all I can say I think from all of us is I wish him well in whatever road he's going down next. Now since David Weiss has joined us late, last to the party, uh, and he's walking into the uh, studios where he's going to be recording a uh, rabbit hole show. I can probably think that's what you're doing, right, David? <laughs> that is uh, correct. Yeah. I wanted to, you know, because you probably got other things you got to do, like, you know, do a show um, over there. I wanted to talk with you and Bob and anyone and everyone here about uh, the whole Max Egan thing. Uh, Mark, of course, as well. Uh, we're all affected by it, everybody in Flat Earth and everybody here on the panel. Uh, of course, it was hosted on the Globusters channel the other day, where Max Vegan, Max Vegan, <laughs> Max Egan came in and uh, you know pretty much didn't engage in a, a lively discussion on flat Earth. He just shut it down. Um, David, you were encouraging those of us. I know you like Max Egan. He's uh, deeply affected your life. You were encouraging us to tread lightly on him. Um, give us the you know what you what you were talking to me about earlier. Um. All right, my camera doesn't fall. Um, Max, no, your Egan, camera's off, but oh, it's, it's off. Go ahead. It, 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 it's, on? it's on now. You're on. Yeah. All right, all right. So, so Max, uh, his videos, you know, the the awakening and transformation, were literally the the videos that woke me up. So, if it wasn't for Max, you guys wouldn't uh, be annoyed with me being in your face all the time. Um, Max is doing um, what what a lot of us did. You know, he he is. You know, when I first got exposed to Flat Earth, I was like, you're crazy. For six months, I banned people from my website, um, and, and I, I see where he's coming from. He made a Flat Earth comment, and then Flat Earth, you know, good people in Flat Earth and trolls attacked him. They started pulling donations from him. They were calling him, you know, vile names, threatening him, you know, and when that happens, people shut down. I won't mention the other show, but there was a show that had a certain type of map that they thought was uh, was the answer, and they were attacking me, you know, and attacking Patricia. Everybody knows who it is. Um, and I still haven't looked into that map just because they turned me off so much. So Max already knows that the ball earth cannot be proven. He knows that NASA is full of shit. He knows that the reality that we live in isn't, isn't what we think it is. He knows about all the false flags. Max is on our side, okay? But he is, you know, he's fed up with the atrocities that are going on in Gaza and around the world. He's seen it firsthand. He's spent his life savings, his life work, you know, doing this 24-7. You know, he doesn't have hot running water, okay? 
he, he, this guy has sacrificed more than all of us together, and it just makes me sick that good people are attacking him. Okay, yes, he should not have come out and said, you know, flat Earth. You know, he made a couple strong statements, and we all just came out barking like Dobermans. So, you know, I, I want people to, you know, if you don't like what Max Egan has to say, don't don't, don't listen to him. But, you know, don't don't. The guy is not our enemy, you know. He 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 will come around one day when he takes the time to look. Did I cover it all? I mean, I'm a little fraz a little frazzled today. No, you covered it all, David, and I wanted to get that out there because uh, I think it's necessary, especially when we see so many people getting attacked within the flat Earth community. I know he's not a flat earther, and for those who've ever been attacked, no one likes that. And I understand the feelings. I was in chat on the Globebuster show, and I saw some comments that were pretty bad. And I was also saying some things like, no, whenever Max would say something that didn't go with what I believe is true. And, you know, to some degree, uh, you know, we all were anti-Max Egan that day. Uh, some were much stronger than others. So, yeah, I guess if you don't like him, don't listen to him. He will come around when he comes around, or not. I guess everyone in the end is going to have to come around to the truth. Right, right. during during you know my 9/11 week, I pushed architects and engineers for four years. I was saying this is what happened. This is what happened. Guess what? I was wrong. It doesn't make me a bad person. We all evolve through what we're learning. You know, um, when I learned about the flat Earth, I thought we went to the moon and satellites. I know I've said that again, and you guys laugh, Bob, especially. Um, <laughs> But it it it's we all learn at the at our same you know at at we just learn as we go. So if somebody is wrong, you can gently say, "Hey, have you considered this? Have you considered that?" You know, or just let them evolve. So sorry for ranting. You're not ranting. It's exactly what I wanted you to say, and I appreciate it. And I think that no matter how we were hurt and affected individually by what. Max was saying, I think we can all see the other side of the story. And uh, again, here's another time I'm going to say I don't agree with Max Egan. I like a lot of the things he's done, and I wish him well. Same it, thing it, I said about Validation Boy. And, 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 and <laughs> Sorry. Sasha, it's all right, Sasha. It's part of the show. Um, it, a, lot, a lot of people out there have, don't know who Max Egan is. You've heard his name. Maybe you heard his show. I, 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 I say go to his website. Or you can go to my website to, under the movies pages. And his movies are linked up there. Watch a couple of his movies. They're really well done. And they're, they're uplifting, if anything. They don't address the flat earth. And they do have a lot of globes in them. I rewatched them. And there's <laughs> globes everywhere. So, you know, everyone's going to be like, agent, agent. But we all have globes, you know. Globes are great. Globes are beautiful until you realize that they're bullshit. Yeah, I know. Mark Sargent said he was uh, <laughs> going to be, uh, or he collected uh, antique globes at one point, And I almost bought a globe prior to my Flat Earth Awakening. There was one in a catalog I thought would look really nice near my bookshelf. I'm glad I didn't spend I, money on that. I was in an uh, unnamed large you know, wholesale store, and they had a huge rack of globes. Thank God I didn't have a Sharpie on me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All globes should be, uh, you know, buy one, get 20 free, <laughs> pretty much at hey. this point. Antonio, right, well, there it is, baby. Oh, yes. yeah, show the shirt. <laughs> show that. Hold and on, explain. hold on, let me, let me do it. You'll have to talk while you're I'm waiting me. for mine. And explain to those who don't understand the significance of said shirt. Antonio and I uh, um, were really moved by the, the Gaddafi video, um, The Great Man-Made River, and we, uh, we had shirts made. And our first round, a bunch of people bought them, but then the T-shirt place said, we're discontinuing the order because we called it... Um, what was the name of the campaign, Antonio? Um, the uh, the great the Muammar great, Gaddafi. Great, yes. And they said they they cannot support campaigns that idolize evil dictators. And we sent them videos and we told them you know stuff and they were just a, a part of the matrix. So we named the campaign uh, "Fallen Rulers of the Middle East," and they printed it. Hmm. So. So that's yes. that. <laughs> they didn't want to print it. Uh, the, the first message they sent me was that uh, it was a copyrighted image, and so I, I showed them that it wasn't, that it was on the pub, in the public domain, and then they came back saying, "No, actually, you're supporting a somebody who committed uh, crimes Atrocities. against humanity." Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So mm. 
yeah, it was it was Davis' idea to call it Fallen Leaders, um, and it worked. So, so what I'm if somebody wanted mine. one? What if somebody if, wanted to buy one? How did they get so, it? If you go to Teespring, T E E S P R I N G dot com, and just uh, search Gaddafi, um, and uh, it, it should come up. I think the campaign's still running. And those of you accusing me of doing this for money. Any any money I make off these shirts, I buy more shirts and I give them to other people. So it's just a cheaper way of getting shirts than doing one-offs yourself. You know, I would rather buy a shirt that someone else made than have to go make it myself. So, so that's right. that. Hey, uh, what's yes. going on? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Was there some weird <laughs> Nathan, what, Nathan, no, Nathan, you got to do a hairdo there, man. What's going on? No, no, this is just after work hairdo, that's all it is. Just all right. <laughs> we all know the show is all about hair from what we've, we've heard. Yeah, that, that's why you relate. Internet problems, computer yes, problems, internet problems, right? a.k.a. Computer hairstyle. Computer problems, hairstyle. Yeah, right. I think it was actually Nathan's hair we were waiting on it having done by the professional stylist. Well, he has employed. Was, I confess. <laughs> <laughs> all right, David, thank you for joining us, and thank you for addressing the Max Egan thing. Now, I noticed right. you pronounced his last name Eigen. Have we all been saying Egan incorrectly? I, I say Egan, I say Eigen, I call me Dave, David, I'm just, Potato, I, I'm, I, I can't read or write in two different languages. Okay, sounds good, just about <laughs> like all of us at times. All right, so I'm going to go with right. Egan, I, I guess. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay on, I'll just mute myself and listen, all oh, right? Oh, okay, good, all yeah. Right. So right. he's in New York at the comedy club waiting to uh, to do his uh, rabbit hole show. Uh, Sasha, what were you going to say? Well, I wanted to say um, in response to something that David was saying that people maybe were disrespectful to Max and he was on the Globebusters. And I feel like that's a really important point that the when people are disagreeing with us and we're being disrespectful, it's very much the same as I felt like he was being a little bit disrespectful towards the flat earthers. And so I thought that I think that we that's the thing to keep in mind is that if you felt like Max Egan was being disrespectful in the way that he was maybe dismissive of some of the arguments that were being put forth or instead of counter arguments he would just say, oh well that's just circular. That's a circular argument. And if people felt like that that was um, disrespectful, then don't counter that with by being disrespectful to him. And I think that that addresses the video the Validation Boy and Bob. It's just this idea that that there's it just seems to be this phenomenon where there's just so much disrespect and, and it feels as though people think it's justified because they disagree with you. It's not. We can disagree and still be respectful of each other. The, the last point I want to make is I adamantly disagree with Max's conclusions. I think the absolute opposite is true. And he got emotional um, just like we get emotional and all these other people. So that's the, just the way it goes. Um, I respect the guy. He's completely wrong about the importance of the flat earth. And we'll go from there. In the end, you know, um, we'll see what happens. So we, thanks. I, go I've got a quick analogy, and that is, and of course I'm biased because for whatever reason he hates me most of all, and I, I don't still don't get that. Eric, you know, I got the top of Eric's enemies list. I never said a bad thing, and Max, he, he loathes my existence. I have no idea why. But the analogy I was going to give was, look, if we've all seen this in movies and television, which if you go into a brand new bar and you're sitting at the bar and you're just bad-mouthing the patrons around you, it, it's only a matter of time before somebody walks up to you and, and says, hey, buddy, you know, don't talk, don't talk to my, about my friends that way. So, It's also there's... Um... It was interesting to me. Uh, he was saying that he was initially put off by the way people approached the, him with the flat earth. And the way he was responding was the same off-putting way. Um, you, and he was even urging people to control others, you know, to, to stop the, the abuse and the, the aggressive approach. I, 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 thought, I found it fascinating that, it, considering that he's, he's a pretty bright guy, that he didn't realize that the approach that people had had towards him, which are just normal human beings, you know, it's not a, a concerted effort, it's just people approaching him. People might be in a bad mood that specific day, you know, that he, was, that he allowed that to set his mode to dismissive 
I, 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 I found that interesting. I mean, the thing that struck me the most was the fact that he said he, or the way he consumed the information or consumed the videos, it was identical to the way my brother consumes the information when I pass it to him, which is that he pauses the video, doesn't actually watch any of it, reads through the comments, and then makes his decisions based on those comments as opposed to anything else, which just seems slightly crazy, but it's nice to know that information that a lot of people simply don't actually watch the video at all, they yeah. just read the comments. So, so Nathan, you know, I'm not defending him, and, and it, it, it's just a, uh, an emotional response, but, you know, he, he gets attacked, you know, he doesn't look into it, he makes a comment, he gets attacked, so then he Googles Flat Earth, he comes across a cross-dresser, then he goes to the cross-dresser's website, who has a don't go to these websites hate board, okay, so now it's everything that, that, that you know, he's, he's expecting, he's attracting it, and it's all happening. Um, and then, you know, so then people say, you know, go to Jaron's video, check out this comment. So he jumps right to the comments, okay? You know, and he's sucked into the matrix of, of this hate, you know, where Mark Sargent never looks at his videos. Look how happy the guy is. No wonder everybody hates him, okay? <laughs> That's so beautiful. It was so fantastic that we got that information. I mean, Bob immediately, once Max had gone started to explain, you know, what that means, and it was quite profound, or at least, I know Bob was directly addressing me in that particular Globebusters, but it was, it was profound, the way he put it, and the way he'd gone through the stages. We, we talk about this all the time when we're talking about other people coming to Flat Earth, but when we see it actually unraveling in front of us, it's, it's so easy to start attacking, because it's, it's a passionate subject. We're all passionate, he's passionate. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, Bob, you you made a great point when you were talking about that and about uh, maintaining your comment sections, trying to maintain your uh, your 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 live chats because you never know what curious non flat earther or sure. flat earth curious person is going to look at that comment section uh, yeah. or or go look at videos and see a bunch of crazy people. And we're not crazy people, but we can appear to be crazy people if we don't try to contain ourselves. Right. So. Yeah, people will try and take over the chat, and essentially that, you know, it's unfortunate because it's the negativity that seems to draw everybody onto that, and then people start engaging and uh, getting really nasty with each other, and, uh, you know, that's certainly not what I want to see, but I, I do have to say that I was a little taken aback by Max when I started the show. Um, you know, first of all, I had said that, you know, I had been watching his videos, and one thing that he kept saying over and over and over again is, is you know, I just want to be able to... Um, discuss this without um, anybody, you know, trying to force this belief down my throat or calling me vulgar names or anything like that. And so that was one of the first things I said at the beginning of the show. It's like, okay, Max, you know, you're going to get your wish. We're going to have a very respectful intellectual discussion here. Um, and I told him that I had admired his work and I had followed it for years, and I have. Um, and I think he is, you know, he's done so much for the truth movement. It's, you know, it's phenomenal. Um, I have the utmost of respect for him. But uh, even after all that and saying that, you know, we were going to have a nice civil discourse, uh, as soon as I stopped talking, he immediately went on the offensive towards me. Um, saying, well, that's the problem, you know, you want to engage people in this subject, and, and, you know, he went off on his rant about that, and uh, so he kind of started out on the offensive right away, and then one of the other things, and David, you may know about this, but uh, I, I noticed in the comments uh, that he has been very much, uh, very active in our comments on the Globebuster section, and uh, quite vulgar, too, by the way, which is amazing, but he said that uh, he was promised that we weren't going to talk about Flat Earth per se, but more about how it is a PSYOP. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I know I didn't say that. I doubt David said that. And I was kind of amazed that, that he said, and it's it's right in there in, in the comments on Globebusters. You can read it. And I'm just like, why in the world would he say that? Because obviously the, he knows we're Flat Earthers. Um, the whole reason that uh, we were having him on, at least in my opinion, was was so that we could have this um, civil conversation and talk about Flat Earth and uh, allow him to say what he thought about it, but it was absolutely going to be about Flat Earth, and I told him, you know, first thing right out of the box, that, uh, you know, Max, I'm not going to try and convince you of the Flat Earth. Um, that's not my objective at all. I, I simply want to have a discussion with you about it, and uh, I, I thought we did fairly well, but uh, he was very much on the offensive, and that, that really took me back. Yeah, he also attacked Mark uh, right away, Mark Sargent, pertaining to a comment that Mark, Mark had made on his video. Mark, would you care to address that? 
Hey, wait, uh, Mark, before you go, I'm going to take off, guys. Great conversation. Max is a good guy. He's just a little, <laughs> he's a little upset. And you know what? We all lose our shit sometimes. So, <laughs> okay? Especially, especially my co-host over here. By Cannon. Yeah, we all, all lose right. our shit. <laughs> Have a nice day. Bye, Mike. <laughs> Bye, David. Bye, Mark. Bye, David. Mark, I don't hate you that much. I know, I know. <laughs> but much. I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, David's gone. Now we can talk really badly about him. All right, let's yeah. talk about David Weiss. That man just... That guy. <sighs> can, I, can I say something regarding uh, Max Egan? Egan? Sure. Um, the, there's something that we, we should, all of us should keep in mind, including him, which is um, different backgrounds, not socioeconomical uh, backgrounds, but um, traditional backgrounds. So he's Australian. The Australian people swear a lot more. In Spain, Spanish people swear a lot more. It's not offensive to children or to elders to say the most crudest words in the English language. It's just how, how Spanish people are. Even on the news, they will say the equivalent to the C word. You know, when something is ridiculous, they will have that expression. So when he uses that language, yes, he's, he's showing that he's passionate and that he's frustrated or annoyed, but it's not intended to be as offensive as we hear it. We hear it and we think, this guy is being, you know, he's, he doesn't care about our traditional values. But when you're a bit stressed... You know, you're going to, to fall back on your own traditional values. And I think part of the language that he was using was not intended the way we uh, construed it. It really was just his natural way of expressing his, his himself. These are the things that most of us never thought about. Thank you for bringing that up, Antonio. Hmm, interesting. Um, anybody else have anything else to add, Mark? I want you to address uh, what was said to you by Max well, pertaining to a comment that you made to him. Well, it wasn't it wasn't a comment that was made directly at him, and that mm -hmm. was if anyone's been following what I do out there, if I see somebody that has a pretty good subscribership or or you know I, I used to have it anyone that had over five thousand followers, what I would do is I would look at the video. Sometimes I wouldn't watch the whole thing all the way through. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I would say uh, if I if I determined they were neutral or against flat Earth, I came up with a generic rubber stamp comment, which I said, you know, thank you for introducing your people to the flat Earth. Blah blah blah. Here's what to expect. Super neutral, and I and I made it very uh, non-conflict so that it wouldn't get deleted. You know, I know that Eric will delete mine anyway. But but if <laughs> but if you have any doubt, if you're on the fence, it's like oh, I'll leave it in there. Heck, what 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 could it hurt? Because I'm just trying to spread the word, and maybe they'll click on my thing, and you know maybe they'll get out there. And so apparently, I had rubber stamped one of his videos, and then I was interviewed shortly after that, and somebody had asked me about that video, and I said, yeah, I didn't really watch it. And he took offense to it because he's going, why, why would you ever make a comment on a video you didn't watch? And it's like, well, because it was a rubber stamp comment. I don't have to watch the whole video. If I think it's a troll video and, they, and they've got 30,000 subscribers, and we, you've seen some of the stuff, people that are out there. There's people with a million subscribers I'll rubber stamp on because they'll be completely against Flat Earth. Uh, who are those guys? The uh, Mythical Morning guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's a perfect example. You know, I was just like, a million subscribers? You bet I'm putting my comments in there. You know, just in the off chance that somebody will see something. Anyway, he got really mad at that and brought it up during the conversation. If that's that's what you're talking about. Yes, it is. And and he he got really bent out of shape. But you could tell the way he was going after me that he was following up with his comment to Chris and Sheree Geo on Truth Frequency Radio, where he said he couldn't trust me as far as he could throw an aircraft carrier. And that I was absolutely one hundred percent a government agent and you know I, I've heard that since, oh, I don't know, week one. <laughs> so I said, all right, it's fine. And so at that point, I just had to pull back and, and let, you know, it, it, was, it was Bob's show anyway. So I was like, you, know, right. you, guys, you guys just keep doing it. I will be the bad cop, and, and I will just sit here, and he can hate me all he wants because he wasn't hating on you guys nearly as much as he hated me. I right. thought that was wise that you did that, and, and uh, well, people, wondered, people wondered, why isn't Mark speaking as much? But I knew I, why. I'm yeah. not going to pick a. I'm not going to pick a fight with a guy. I, I mean, I could. I've done enough phone work over the decades that I can tell if somebody's you know doesn't want to have anything to do with me. So, 
fine. He can. There was plenty of other choices there, and, well, and he had own. He was he was mad that you had uh, rubber stamped, as you say, his comment section with a positive or at least look into flat Earth sort of yeah. comment directed toward his audience, not really specifically, you know, as much him. But then yeah. he goes around later and said that he didn't watch videos; he just read comments. So. That's a, a pot calling the kettle black in some way kind of yeah, thing that yeah. was going on there. And Patricia, let me also add to that, that uh, before uh, we had Max on, we had all gotten together and kind of talked about it, how we were going to handle it. And uh, a Humanistor, or excuse me, uh, <laughs> uh, not Humanistor, the other guy, uh, Sage Quay, that's right, Sage Quay <laughs> was in on that. And uh, we, I brought up that uh, one time when we had a uh, debate with uh, Int Cheese, International Cheese Eater, that uh, some of the comments that we got back, it's like, oh yeah, four against one or three against one, that's real fair. And so we decided that, you know, we weren't really going to have that many people. So uh, Sage of Quay uh, decided not to, to be on the show. And Mark, you know, said, well, I, I'll just kind of sit back in the background. And, and I've noticed in the comments that a lot of people are saying, well, how come... You know, how come Mark didn't uh, come back and respond to Max's comments? Uh, he had the golden opportunity. And again, I just want to say that that was kind of pre-agreed that uh, myself and Jaron would, would primarily handle it as well as, as David, um, just so it didn't give the appearance necessarily, or at least minimize uh, the appearance that we were all ganging up on him. And, and I didn't want it to come across that way at all. Yeah, I yeah. think that you handled it, and it, it was very gentlemanly handled. We, we also have to consider, uh, uh, sorry Mark, um, we also have to consider that anybody who's going into a, a situation, even though, like Bob, you said, you know, this isn't going to be, we're not going to be attacking you. You, you made that quite clear. But in the mind of the other person, they're going into what they sus suspect or feel, sense, is a, a lion's den. The lions aren't attacking, but they still have, so they're, they're entering already with that. I know this, because when, when I see my colleagues, there's three of them against me. And even though they're not being aggressive or, you know, using violent language or anything like that, you know, I have this shield, you know. Well, I, I think we all do when we're in that kind of environment. So I think yeah, that I kind have, of... I have a, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think that kind of um, directed the way he expressed himself. I think if it was just Bob, you and he, or Jaron and he, um, not that I think it would have been any better, but I think he would have been more settled, more calm, um, there's the the three of you who are hard hitters, and I, I have to say, when Mark jumped in and did actually correct a couple of things, I I was sitting here going yes, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> yeah, but I I also wanted him to stay on as long as possible, and there yeah. were yeah there were times I I probably could have jumped. There were the times I could have jumped in, but it was like, uh, I'm gonna say the I'm gonna say not necessarily the wrong thing, but something that's really gonna tick him off. And, I thought he uh, was going to hang up and leave several times. Did anybody else feel that yes. way? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can, no. can I say something else? Sorry. Uh, um, it, it does have a bearing on this. He's dedicated his, his life and his efforts to Gaza. Now, um, I worked in mental health. And the, the, my mother passed me a book um, uh, called Staying Sane by a very popular uh, media psychiatrist and psychologist, a, a, a guy who, who got two degrees, one in psychology and one in psychiatry. And he was one of these guys that would go on television shows and morning TV shows and, and be the person that would respond you know, to any questions regarding depression or anorexia or any of these things. He, he has this book called Staying Sane and in it he explains that for a rotund mental health, the best thing to do is try to have as wide a, a variety of interests as possible. If your main focus is just work, if you made it redundant, break down. If it's just your family, when there's a family problem. So the more cards you have, the more damage you can take and not suffer profoundly. Now if he has dedicated his life to Gaza and there's a resolution regarding Gaza. That's his life. That's his dedication. It's gone. If there was peace, if there was an agreement signed, if uh, uh, United Nations or Russian forces acted as uh, peacekeepers between Palestine and Israel, all of that's gone. And I think he, he might be unconsciously sensing that because breakdowns don't come from the fronts. They come from the back. 
and I think it's, it's, a, it's an important thing to bear in mind when somebody has dedicated everything. And I say this for all of us too. You know, we're all dedicating a lot of energy to this. We must have other interests too. Uh, otherwise, it's, uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> NASA could come out and say, yes, it's flat. Everything's, and the government and everybody just admit everything. And then, you know, we, we would, it, we'd have a, a problem, you know, uh, psychologically or, or spiritually. Nathan, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I saw a lot of the way he argued in the way my family argue with me, and I'm quite open with my family about what I believe in, and they're quite happy to argue the toss all day long. So I saw a lot of the way he argued in the way they argue with me, and one of the things that he said over and over, circular argument. What, what I was hearing was the way um, people. And it's probably back to comments, actually. If you just look at it in the context of the comments, you've got a, a flat Earth proof followed up by a globe Earth proof. And if you're just reading that, it's kind of, well, you've got a, a circular argument or two sides of a coin. But the reality is, one's te they're both testable, but when you go out, they, they come up with one result and not the other. But it kind of s it's focusing it on what's contained in our arena. In other words, it's only what's coming through our screens, what's written in the comments, as opposed to what's outside and testable. And it seemed to focus on those arguments that do have you know, a, a globe equivalent, regardless of whether or not that's actually true. Mm -hmm. Well said. Does anyone else have anything they want to add to this topic about Max Egan Eigen before we close it down, Antonio? Yes. Uh, sorry, Bob, do you want to go? No, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll go after you. Okay. Um, yes, is uh, concerning the PSYOP, and this uh, can also um, relate to other people who are validation boy, who are, uh, make allegations. Now, we all know that there, there are firms of private detectives. You know, the world has private detectives for cheating couples, for all kinds of things. The reason these organizations exist is to get proof now, unless you engage with a private detective agency to actually find that it really is a PSYOP, that somebody really is a CIA operative, any, any opinion that you give is just a guess. So when people are making allegations, just the fact that I'm mentioning this right now, there'll be people listening going, oh, yeah, actually, it's true. You can't make an allegation and, and act as if that's true unless you actually have proof. And to have proof, you're going to have to do lab work and you're going to have to do things other than sit and think and read other people's comments. You know, that's what gives private detective agencies their money, you know, that people want to know things for sure. So, you know, hire a private detective agency and do background checks on all of us. Please do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Orphan Red's like, no. <laughs> Not because she's done anything wrong or is an agent. She has. She just wants to well, right. she, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully she has. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, Bob, what were you going to say? I was going to say, well, and Antonio, first of all, there's a big difference, I think, between cognitive dissonance and, and megalomania. And mm -hmm. uh, those are kind of the categories that we're going to separate, you know, Max and Validation Boy uh, in. But one of the things that, that Max kept saying that really struck me as, as odd is that uh, he was saying that, you know, we needed to try these criminals in the courts, uh, the, the international courts and stuff like that. And, and, and to me, that's just so silly because anybody that has been researching this knows that, you know, the legal system, the judicial system is completely bought and paid, paid for. Um, we're never going to get any real resolution um, in, in that particular area. Uh, and, you know, as I said yesterday on the, on the show, I think the only way that we're really going to resolve these, these kind of world problems is to raise awareness about them. Um, because when people raise their awareness, they raise their overall consciousness, their uh, vibration, and we simply kind of evolve beyond that type of behavior and people will see that and they're just going to say, you know what, I, I'm not going to play this game anymore. I'm not going to support this system. And when, you know, it's, it's us against the 1% essentially and when the 99% say, you know what, we're not going to play your game anymore, that basically makes the elite completely powerless. Um, and that's something, the only way that's going to happen is by people becoming aware um, at raising their vibration, becoming more conscious of it, and that's the message I think that we kind of have to portray out to people um, to make them aware. 
in the best possible way that we can do that with the best possible face we can do it with. I think Absolutely. Bob, Sorry. Uh, well, I was going to say, I think Bob is right in that if you, there's this idea that, oh, we'll just arrest all the politician criminals. Yeah, okay, but then it'll just be the prime ministers or the assistant, the deputy ministers that just step up into their place. Um, or you'll have a power vacuum where there's no one to step in and then you end up with the extremists and they kind of take over, right? And so this idea that you can just remove the people in power and somehow society will continue to function in a way that is beneficial for us, I think that's very naive. And I think we've seen that uh, when the U.S. goes and removes leaders and then nations... I wanted to bring a moment and to put this voice in the we have heard him or two multiple times as that cross-dresser, or he's cross-dressing. And so Eric Dubé has mocked me, mocked my videos, he's insulted me on his Facebook page, um, and so I'm not a great friend of his or anything, but I, I would still like to stand up for him here and say that I think that that's disrespectful, that he's, for one thing, he's clearly not a cross-dresser. He is an actor, and he makes uh, humorous videos making fun of people that he thinks that's in an appropriate way, in the same way that Antonio has a character for his videos with a little Spanish accent kind of amped up, and the same way that I have my character for my videos where I kind of amp up my personality. So Eric Dubé made these videos. Yes, he was mocking me. Yes, he wore a little dress with the, the, the big cleavage to kind of stimulate me. And did that hurt my feelings? That's kind of independent of the fact that none of that means he's a cross-dresser. And so every time we refer to him as the cross-dresser or the cross-dressing video, we're doing two things. Number one, we're accusations that we don't have any, any evidence of. And number two, it's I think it's it's suggesting that somehow that would be this horrible thing that he should feel ashamed about. And I don't, it's not up to me to say whether someone should feel ashamed of it or not, but I think that it's a weird thing to just keep pushing in the flat earth community that cross-dressers are shameful and that that's a humiliating term to use and to use it for Eric Dubay when we all know he's not a cross-dresser. So yeah, I agree. And in I fact, if we had... Uh, uh, Fifteen people who were cross-dressers who became flat earth earthers tomorrow, I'd be like, yay, fifteen more people who are flat earthers. That's all do, I'd think about. Do you mind if I add something to that, actually, Patricia? Um, the same applies to flat earth itself. So uh, this kind of links Max and uh, Eric in a way. But Thomas Sheridan is obviously not a flat earther and did a similar thing against flat earthers. So it's not... Eric, flat earther on flat earther abuse, it's a globe <laughs> earther. And he came under a massive amount of ridicule for it. And the same principle applies. We shouldn't ridicule people for holding the globe belief. You know, I quite happily get on with all my family, despite the fact that none of them believe they live on flat earth. And we're a very happy family. I've got a comment today, somebody saying, oh, you're you're on the road to divorce with your wife. It's like, well, nonsense. You know, I'm very much in love with my wife. What, what a load of rubbish. But because she's a, a globe believer and I'm a flat earther, that people automatically assume that there's discord and that shouldn't be the case you know um, if we're gonna as Max put it so, you know do it in a soft way rather than a horrible abusive nasty way then you know I'm all for that you know I think Max really opened my eyes to, to the way that people consume flat earth when they when they aren't flat earthers yeah I, I think uh, Eric might not have thought that if his thumbnail is him dressed as Patricia Steer um, and people like Max Egan come across it, then they're seeing a flat, a well-known flat earther dressed as a woman. What what is he doing? Is and and somebody like somebody. First of all, you know how different nationalities have different traits that are generally white, known from outside. Like we in in the UK, we have ideas about the the Americans. The Americans have ideas about the British. We all have ideas about other nationalities. One of the things about the Australians is that they're butch, they're, you know, they're men, you know, they're earthy men. To see a man dressed like that, so that's the, the, the reference that he made to this cross-dresser, that's come, again, comes from that kind of different way of 
of relating to the world. It's totally unjustified to say, what are you saying? Are you saying people don't have the right to dress however they want? But um, I don't know whether Eric Dubay has considered this, that there'll be people out there, he, he probably thinks, oh, I couldn't care less about those people, but there will be people out there who will come across that and think, wow, it's making people crazy. Same with Validation Boy, they might look at Validation and say, the flat earth makes people nuts. Same with Dan Pratt, you know, and, and other people, it just it makes them nuts. So, um, I don't know, I don't know what, you know, whether the, the idea is, you know, be more conscious of, of what you're doing, but... Yeah, um, I think that's why, one of the reasons why I gathered everyone together to do this is, uh, and I, I put um, flat earth friends in the title of this, uh, whether or not we agree with how everyone does their flat earth stuff, just don't watch it if you don't like it. Um, the the hate and negativity and calling people cross-dressers and making fun of other people isn't going to help the goal of every single flat earther. There's really only one goal, which is spread the flat earth. Uh, and and what, what comes after we get a lot of people involved in that? Is the government going to change? Is NASA going to fall? Yeah, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. We don't know. We want to get more people on board, and I know Antonio uh, and Nathan and Sasha, we've all talked about this. We get more people on board, and I don't have the answers about what we're going to do when we get more people on board, but maybe somebody who's going to come on board who's going to not see a video that will put them off looking into Flat Earth is going to come up with a great idea about how we bring this into the mainstream. So we should be careful of what we say, mean things I'm talking about. Uh, don't be afraid to express your personality and who you are and your way of doing it, uh, be it very serious or experiments or with humor or with songs or with whatever. But, but telling other people how they should run their channel, making fun of other people for the way that they run their channel, making fun of flat earthers who don't have channels but do other things, uh, it's just creating a lot of disharmony and discord. And uh, I've been accused of being the person who wants us all to join hands and sing Kumbaya damn right, damn right, and I make no excuses for that. I do not think that hate is going to solve this problem. Hate is actually what got us in this world that we are living in now that doesn't even really exist. We need to get out of it. And, you know, do you have to love everybody? No, but just leave them alone. Just leave them alone and go watch a video that you do like. Get your information from people you do like. Uh, we've got a lot of people who are at each other's throats. And when they could be using the time, they're at each other's throats to make a great kick-ass video and wake up some more flat earthers. Do that with your time. So, anybody else have anything to add to that? Great. I have something, but I'll go, I'll go after everybody else because I won't well, forget Bob, it. Bob, was gonna, Bob mentioned something about megalomania, and it'd be nice to actually give people a, a reason because this is still going to happen. I mean, maybe you can jump in, Bob, and you know, you, I, hope, I think you're going to relate it to Validation Boy, or at least I should. <laughs> well, I, there's actually a, a few people that, uh, that I have issues with, and, and you know, I'm not, first of all, I'm not here to bash anybody, but I am going to express what I feel about this. And yes, megalomania, even Validation Boy himself uh, said in his video that he was a megalomaniac, um, that, that, you know, that's, that's the way he operates, which surprised me, honestly, because um, he didn't start out that way. He didn't come across um, as being that way. He seemed very um, appreciative of everybody else. He made several videos that, uh, you know, he told about how much he appreciated how everybody had, had contributed to um, his awakening. Um, but... When what I guess I'm finding out is that uh, these people, and I, and I hate to throw him into this category, but there are people, and we all are aware of these people, that they will try and get close to you um, simply to get the publicity and simply to, uh, you know, make their own gains. Um, you know, like more subscribers or something like that on the channel. Uh, I have another guy that I have a problem with that I think is absolutely that way, and I'll, I'll mention his name. Uh, his name is Robert Bassano. Uh, he was on Jeff Stewart's show. And, uh, and you know, it just seems to me that, uh, you know, when I listen to him, and, and the biggest reason I have a problem with this guy is because he he thinks he's, you know, he's got this huge ego. Like when he was talking on John's show the other day, he was saying, oh yeah, uh, uh, this this world's greatest marksman, and I was back up to the world's greatest marksman, and then he's, you know, talking about how he's this wonderful student to his professors, and I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And I look at people like that, and it's like, God, can you get any more full of yourself? Um, and then when, you know, I kind of expressed that to him, he started writing emails to Jaron, 
um, saying, "Oh, you got to drop this guy, Bob. He's a you know he's just you know going to hurt all the movement." And of course, Jaron told me about it because Jaron and I are friends. And um, the same thing is kind of so that's what I call megalomania. You know, they they all, all they're interested in is climbing up on the backs of other people who have worked very hard to get their channels where they are. Uh, I mean. You know, we've we've been doing Globebusters for about nine months now, and we've done you know three to six hours a week, uh, pretty much every week, you know, until recently, um, and and we're still just barely under five thousand subscribers. It's not like we're top brass by any mean whatsoever. <laughs> uh, I think almost everybody here has more subscribers, but but and it's not about subscribers at all. Um, I enjoy I do it because I enjoy doing the show, but I, you know I don't want to be used as a ladder rung um, for somebody that's going up to basically diss everybody else and make themselves look good by saying everybody else is looking bad. And uh, I kind of think that Eric, Eric Dubé you know, kind of does that a little bit, um, a little bit too much for my liking. So the people that I follow on YouTube, um, you can tell there's just this vibration there, this, this um, likableness. Um, where you can tell that they're doing it because they're genuinely interested in Flat Earth. It's not about the view count to them. Um, it's about getting the message out. And also, it's they, you can tell they're just genuine, nice people. All of you here are very genuine, nice people. Um, and it's unfortunate that we have these people that attack us um, and accuse us of being the top brass and we're all in collusion with each other, like we're trying to diss out everybody. And, you know, I, I try to be the complete opposite from that. I mention people on Globusters all the time, up-and-comers, uh, like Flat Earth Asshole. I mean, frankly, I think the guy's a riot. I love mm -hmm. him. I think he's funny as I'll get out. Um, not to mention, he looks just like my son, and of course, it, you know, kind of like with Jaron. I look at these things, and I, I don't look at them as coincidences. I look at them as synchronicities, and I go with my gut on synchronicities when weird stuff like that happens. So, yeah, I like Flat Earth Asshole, and, and uh, I liked Validation Boy. Um, they just kind of rang true as being really good uh, people to me. So um, that's just you know where I go. I'm I'm trying to support the people that I think are going to present the flat Earth message in a very positive way. Um, although I don't dislike Dan Pratt, um, I don't agree with um, the way he has handled a lot of stuff and and accusations that are made with absolutely no basis, um, you know, or proof. You know, like what what is being said about you, Patricia, uh, or what you know, Star Gods has said about you. I I look at that and it's like, what proof do you have of this? Uh, you know, when I look at you and I look at Mark, what I see is, ooh, I just lost video, but anyway. Uh, yes, what I, okay, all right. So what I see is people that are dedicating their life to this. They're spending an enormous amount of time. Uh, Mark is bringing people onto his show of every type that. Uh, are kind of supporting this this flat earth model and also disproving the globe. So I look at that and I think, so what is it that these people are seeing that you're doing so wrong, Patricia, or that you're doing so wrong, Mark, um, when all I see is somebody that's completely dedicated to the movement? It, it just puzzles me. I find it odd when, well, there's two people who you've named who are, have now said that they only went on my show to get more attention, that they were using me because I'm a user. But I can look back at those particular interviews with those people and see that they were either A, the best actor ever known to mankind, or B, completely pleased, happy, and totally into the interview and had a great experience because that's what they said afterwards as well. Then the tide turned. Now, what happened? Did I change? No. I just got maybe a little more professional and got a microphone and got a little better at speaking. But I'm still the same person doing the same thing. They changed. No idea what changed them. I hope it's not a virus, and I hope none of us catch it. Mark. Well, and, and don't forget, you know, something we, we talked about a long time ago, and that is conspiracy people are genuinely suspicious about a lot of different things, and their suspicion can be tri tripped and triggered in, you know, just a, a heartbeat. Uh, so, yeah, after doing your show, Patricia, all of a sudden they can, you know, they talk to a few people and say, oh, yeah, yeah, don't trust Patricia, blah, blah. You know, b based on hearsay, uh, you know, I had one guy say that uh, that supposedly they had heard from a guy, from a friend of another guy who lived in Oregon who called me, and I said, oh, yeah, I work for the DOD. It's no big deal. It's like, you got any names? You got any dates? You got anything? It's like, no, no, I heard from a friend of a friend of a friend, which is why I kind of joked and put that Ferris Bueller 
uh, clip at the front of one of my Strange Worlds where the girl was saying that, you know, through like eight different degrees of separation, she heard that Ferris was sick. And, uh, yeah. So, again, the, the conspiracy crowd is genuinely... They're, they're at a heightened level of, you know... Which is good, because we can catch things. We can catch real yeah. things. Yeah, but, but yeah. You, the you also side. summed it up well the other night, Mark. You said that the male ego is a fragile thing. <laughs> it is. <laughs> this so is what weird. I think. This is what I think, Patricia. Mm -hmm. I think some, some people come on your show, and they feel really valued, because you make fe people feel welcomed. Okay, so they feel welcomed, and they then carry this small, gentle high on and expect or hope for things to happen that don't. And then they have, every high has a, is followed by a low. Then they go into the low, and at the low point, their, their memories will link back to other low points in their life. It might be being rejected as a child by a, another child, you know, a, a friend or, or a, a girl or a boy that you liked. And, the, they make associations and they behave to the world like they did back then. This is something they will have repeated over and over whenever they've had a type of rejection and it can be them see, thinking that the world is rejecting them. Then they find a, a punch bag, a target, and they aim their anger at that, which is their mistake. They've, they've been doing this all along and they will carry on doing it. We also have to bear in mind that we know that there's a uh, the sexualization of children and the infantilization of adults. Now, if we look at the behavior of these men, they are infantile. They're not some Eric Dubé is more juvenile, but these guys are infantile. What they're doing, everything you could you could just see what they do coming out of a child. You know, the terms would be different and the targets would be different, but the ploy would be exactly the same. You know, they would call her ugly, the girl that they think is the most beautiful, because she didn't smile to them that morning. You know, just whatever. It's it's all things that are based on your psyche. And whereas what you're saying is completely true, Mark. You know, people that are already in the conspiracy world, they're, you know, there are the memes, you know, the shill, the operatives, and all these things, which we suspect are there. Um, and, you know, everybody already has this heightened awareness. But this heightened awareness can, like Nathan has, and I have discussed, can make it very easy for things to, to go on unnoticed, like infantile behavior. Stargos doesn't think that he's being infantile when he's making an infantile gesture and sound. He doesn't realize that he's being infantile. And the same with Dan Pratt. He doesn't realize how absurdly facile his arguments are and just how, well, how infantile they are. Um, so I think another thing is all of the distraction, all of the people saying the flat earth movement is dead, uh, people are shells, all of these things keep us on this physical, very physical, direct um, stimulation side of, of existence. All of us have had moments when we've realized that we're living on a, on a flat earth and have started to ponder the mechanisms involved, what energies are involved, what things are possible, and that's the less direct stimulus. Now, when we're distracted and sucked into arguments and things, it makes it much more difficult to go back into that contemplative mode where we can make discoveries. Most of our discoveries, that are personal discoveries, have come when we've been in that mode. You know, when I was listening to Globebusters, Bob, um, when you had CD, I was in a really mellow frame of mind. I was lying down and the thoughts that were, you know, because there was no confrontation, there was no animosity, everything was, was information. And it was great. Now, when we get sucked into stuff, you know, it's, it makes it more difficult to engage with that, with the, with the, the discovery of the world, in that side of the flat earth. So raising the vibration higher, it sounds new agey. Don't take it like I'm saying it from a new age perspective. I'm saying it from a practical perspective. If we all focus on doing this on our own channel and in our own lives, and even if we don't have a channel, if we're uh, you know just viewing videos in general, we will eventually eliminate all of this. And I also think that there is a component of being a white knight. Be you, a knight usually means a man, but it could be a woman. If you see something happening somewhere, 
in a video, uh, be it the video maker or in a comment section, step up and say, hey, you, what you just said is incorrect. You have no proof. Please yeah. provide proof or stop. Patricia, let me let me expand on that. You know, you said new agey may sound, uh, or, or excuse me, higher vibration may sound new agey, mm -hmm. but the fact is, is it is an absolute provable scientific yes, it is. fact. But a lot of people will say it's new agey, but it is it's real science. Very real science. There is a uh, methodology to actually detect that called Karelian photography. Um, and with this type of photography, you can actually see people's auras, plants' auras, uh, the energy field that, that essentially surrounds living things. Um, and one of the things that, that I thought was amazing, they actually had uh, at a secrets conference that I did uh, years ago, they actually had a Carillion photographer there doing uh, people's auras. And you could tell when people were in, in different moods, it would show up absolutely in their aura. And, you know, people that were extremely spiritual, extremely centered, uh, would have a kind of a bluish purple aura. Um, and people that were agitated, it would be lower towards the red spectrum. And, of course, these colors represent frequencies. And red is a much lower frequency, longer wavelength than blue or ultraviolet. Um, which is a much higher, shorter frequencies, and you could see when somebody's anger versus somebody is that you know, like you were saying, uh, Antonio, in a very mellow state, um, it is absolutely d demonstrable, a hundred percent. So you know, and I have noticed also that people say, like in our comments, they don't like the new agey part. Uh, you know, when I mention, you know, when I say I believe that God is within us, and I truly do believe that. Um, and I believe that scripture absolutely backs that up. Um, a lot of hardcore Christians will say, oh, that's just, you know, that's the devil, you know, thinking that. But it's not true at all. I mean, even our modern science uh, proves that, that when you are at a state of ease, when you are um, self-reflective, contemplative, um, you come across better. Things work better for you. Everything about it is absolutely real. And so, you know, I'll, I can call it new agey, uh, whatever, because I believe that it's absolutely real, and there's the science 100% to back it up. Let's get our flow back. That's what I'm encouraging people to do. Yeah. Uh, Sasha? Yeah, I was gonna say, I think one of the issues that's coming up is that it, it does have a lot to do with the intent of the video maker. There are people that are making YouTube videos about the flat Earth because they believe the Earth is flat, but their primary motivation is maybe I can make money off of this thing. And so I think when they realize, like, oh, it's, it's harder to make money off of this thing than I thought it might be, I think that's when that anger and that bitterness come in. Um, because I think that they had this fantasy of, of what this could do for them. And I think that that's important, this idea that you're, you have to be doing it because you believe in it, but it's not enough to just believe that the earth is flat. And I think that that ties into that next step when there are enough people that are believing in the flat earth and how we're shaping our community. And, and I think that has to do with integrity. And that ties in, I think, with what Bob is saying, which is I think we need to be motivated by a sense of integrity. And so if you're making your flat earth uh, videos that you have integrity in how you're approaching that and uh, there was in the Globebusters uh, this week there were some chat discussions and people were saying you know we'll burn everything down and mm. I was really reacting to this saying no 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 please do not burn everything down because that leads us to the dark ages that leads us to the reign of terror that leads us to I don't, like I said, I'm going to say it, I don't want to be the sex slave to the guy in my area who has the biggest machete. That is not <laughs> my plan for my life. And I need to know that there is a structure in place to protect me from that being the outcome. And so, and I think that that's important. It's this idea of, there are, like Bob is saying, there is this element to the Flat Earth community that believes in integrity and that believes in in the good and in being good people and that want the change in society not because they're just anarchists and they're powerless and they think 
I don't care what happens next. I just want to burn this down under the name of Flat Earth. Well, that's not going to help anyone because then we're just all walking around amongst the ashes trying to build something up and we can't because we're afraid of everybody around us. So I think this idea of let's take responsibility for what this is, where it's going, and what it can be. And it can be a movement about having integrity, having principles, and wanting to build a better society. And that comes that's my Buckminster Fuller quote, uh, which is that you, you, you don't just burn the system down. You create a model for a new system that makes the old model obsolete, that makes everyone see, oh, wait a minute, what these flat earthers are doing, that seems so much better. What they're proposing is better than what we have. Let's move to that model. I think that's more powerful. I'd give you a standing ovation now, but uh, you'd be looking <laughs> at my chest then. <laughs> so, <woo -hoo. laughs> um, Mark, you had something to add to that. Yeah, the, the, it's very, very well put, Sasha. And I don't think, I really don't. I know people say, oh, you're looking at the glass half full and you make too many flat earth friendship things and songs and all that stuff. But I don't think that, that it would eventually turn into a burn down scenario where people, I know in the chat rooms and I know there are others out there that say, oh, yeah, we've got to attack. You know, we, we've got to go after. But let's say, for example, I'm just going to throw a hypothetical out there. Let's say Obama came out next month and, you know, said solemnly that the earth was flat and there was this big investigation going on and Congress was involved and blah, blah, blah. I don't, and, and of course, because of now with the social media, everyone would find out about this within hours. You know, just, it'd be instant, all, all over the place, instant within hours. Do I think that people would all of a sudden grab pitchforks and torches and start running through the streets chanting and, and looking for things to burn down? No. I mean, yeah, NASA would take a big hit, but let's say even even hypothetically, yeah, you took out Cape Canaveral and, and Jet Propulsion Laboratories. Who's the target after that? There is no target. Uh, there's no, you know, you're not, you're never going to say, well, the entire government was involved because you're going to, you know, all the local politicians would be asked and, and, and your senators, and they say, we had no idea. You know, you, there'd be a lot of finger pointing, but there wouldn't be enough players. That, let, let me put one, one different way, and I, I don't want to digress too much because we don't have that much time, which is the people at the highest level, the people that know about this are buried so deeply in, in, in secrecy. They've hidden themselves so well that they're never the fingers are never going to get pointed towards them. It's never it's never going to get that far. So do I think, Sasha, that that you know the buildings are going to burn? Not necessarily. Not because people again, you know, most of people are going to learn on their phones anyway. They're going to they find out on their phone like, hmm. I mean, there would be this big wow moment where everybody's just kind of staring up in the sky. But I, I, even though they'd be filled up with a lot of energy and and anticipation, I just can't see them looting in the streets. Well, not right away, anyway, unless the police departments <laughs> yeah. decided well, to pack it in. Getting the idea that that this was created would come into a lot of people's hearts and minds at that moment exactly. first, before yeah. the urge to loot, which would stop the urge to loot from happening. Which is why I am very shocked that there's so much animosity within the flat Earth community. Because if we all have had this huge revelation, even if we had it a long time ago, there's people who say they were flat earthers for years, uh, or they just woke up yesterday to this. It fills you with a feeling of connectedness with your fellow human beings, people you used to fight about. At least uh, you, you're going to say, they're, they're my brother. Uh, and people say, oh, you're taking this down, a 1960s uh, love fest sort of thing. Well, this isn't the 60s. There's, this is now. And what we're doing now is, I hope, realizing we're in a place we didn't know we were in, but we've been here all along. And the person next to you, if we all woke up anyway, is, is connected to you. And together, we can achieve so much more than apart. So let's get yeah. together. Yeah, but, I agree. Uh, also, let me let me kick in one other thing here. Um, I think that you're right. People would realize that oh my God, if the Earth is flat and we are in an enclosed cl enclosure, um, that there must probably be a creator then. But uh, one of the things that Mark said in his clues that I absolutely 100% agree with is that uh, the biggest thing we have to worry about at that point is the church coming in and saying, ah, see, we had it right all along, and then people are going to be flocking to the church, uh, and then what they do with that newfound authority or that, you know, that's going to be the interesting thing, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah. And all the, the religions the, will be doing it, different religions, and then the they may be fighting there. Do yeah. they take a liberty? I, I, I don't know. I, you'd think that they wouldn't because it's for real. You know, it's not like they can they can guess, do a lot of guesswork at that point and, be, and just make it up because, like, if there is a creator, then they're accountable as well. So it's not like the old days, but people would have a fear of the old days, which is why I think that's why you bury you keep this thing hidden as long as you can because of that. Can I, sorry, I was just going to interject one point that comes back to what Sasha was saying earlier, and she said it last night as well, um, or yesterday, um, which is about the social standards, and that's that we have to set them ourselves. It's all, you know, it's nice to speculate about if the church took control, but this is happening now, and it's completely unprecedented. Same goes for things like people going nuts. We've got no way of gauging any of this, because it's new to all of us, so there's no set standards for how people will react to a complete revelation. But Sasha was saying about sort of looking at um, people who may have things wrong. We're, we're far enough along now where we can say if somebody's just making a completely rubbish argument. And the following day, Mark sent me a little link to something that Antonio talked about on the same show. So in that same discussion, Antonio was saying we have to stay within the boundaries of society and we can't just go around graffitiing on walls that the earth is flat. So then Mark's today has sent me a link, which I tweeted, and I'm sure he did too, of the words flat earth on a pier in Britain. I don't know exactly which town it was in, but it kind of immediately made me think, wow, the, the synchronicity of this is unreal. You've got Antonio saying we've got to say within these standards, and then Mark sends me somebody who's just been compelled. You know, they've, they've, they, they've not been able to help themselves. Um, it's the, the devil drives you, as it were. You know, somebody's been felt absolutely compelled to go out and graffiti, whatever it was, eight foot tall letters, flat earth. Um, but yeah, but we, while I'm smiling, we shouldn't really praise this. We can't do this. It's illegal. It's just not acceptable in the same way as sort of bashing each other in the comments or being absolutely vile talking about filth isn't acceptable either. I'll, I'll own up right now. It was me that did that spraying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember, Nathan, there was the Globebusters boat, though. Remember? If people yes. could do something yeah, like that. Yeah, that. Definitely, the Globebusters <laughs> boat. Yeah. Uh, well, there's something um, else as well. Sorry, Patricia. Yes. Can I, no, can I just go ahead. Quick? Yes. <clears throat> when people are uh, asking for big changes, come on, let's, let's, let's. Um, they don't really, you know, the suggestions are really vague. Let's arrest all the politicians. How? Do we just walk into... You know, political buildings and start grabbing people. That's assault. You know, we we can't just do these things. Um, when we look back in history, like this goes back to what you were saying, Mark, that the the church might uh, have a, a resurgence of of, uh, of influence. When we look back, the 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 influence the church had was huge. It was everything was the church, and that's diminished massively. Now, the things that's really powerful is economics. That will diminish too, but it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in a period of, of a month or a couple of months. The the progression is slow, and we we you know we we live in a microwave world where you can have a TV dinner in three minutes. That's you know nature works at its pace, and we're a natural being of of this plane. So as nature accommodates and consciousness accommodates new ideas, political systems will change, the influence it, it exerts will diminish, the influence economics exerts will diminish. We already have the Ubuntu system spreading, we already have voluntarism, we already have things happening that are like, like uh, the proposition, you know, Sasha, the create a better model, you know. So it's not going to happen overnight. The Ubuntu is, a, is an old, it's an ancient idea. It wasn't just Michael Tellinger. Um, it's a, the resurfacing of an old idea. And in the old days, you, you mentioned, Bob, seeing auras. There's all kinds of myths and legends about people being a lot more um, accommodating of the term aura, of the feeling, you know, the, the language had terms for somebody that gives you the heebie-jeebies, you know, for somebody that has a bad vibe about them. In Spanish, we have mala leche, bad milk, you know, it means uh, bitterness. Um, but it, the changes that are, are coming to the world, we are that change. Everybody is that change. Some people are still clinging to the violent opposition idea, but that will pass. Uh, 
that when people are expecting people to go to Congress and arrest, you know, this that's part of the old world. When that's been done before, you know, there's been violence, there's been machetes, you know, that's not going to happen. And I think one of the problems in the U.S., I, we see this from, from the U.K., is this fear of the military complex, of the, you know, soldiers. And if society was to collapse due to some completely unforeseen thing, the, the guys that would keep everything, and I, I have no love for the army, I'm a, I'm a devout pacifist, but the guys that would keep things running are the military, not because they can shoot people looting, it's because they have the organization and they have the equipment to keep things running, you know, to restore water plants, to organize and have a quick effect. So we need to relax and, and wait and see what happens. You know, if we all died the next instant, it's okay. You know, I don't you know, I'm not I, always I, going to, but let's just wait and relax. I, yes, and, and enjoy, enjoy this wonderful yes. discovery we've yeah. all made. Yeah. And, and, you know, I was thinking uh, just now, as a matter of fact, I was thinking that there would be, because it's easy for us, because we've been absorbing this for as long as we have, but I would think that, yeah, if that message did all of a sudden get broadcast to all the phones, there would be probably a period of at least a day or two where people would be like, no, seriously, is this real? <laughs> is it like, no, no, what is this? You know, they'd be looking at their watches like, what, April was a while ago. April 1st was a while ago. So is this is this actually happening? I could see that actually be a, being a headline where people would be have to confirm with everybody else. It's like, hey, hey, John, is this, is this actually, did you get the same? What does it mean exactly? Because a lot of people just wouldn't get it. Kind of like um, the, the thing that I did with Stanton Friedman, where I was in to, to try and discuss it for like 10 minutes, and then all of a sudden he stops me and he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. You mean we're actually talking about this? This is a real thing? This isn't this is a hypothetical? This is, a, this is a, a metaphor for something else? He goes, this is real? And I go, yeah, why? He goes, oh, I got I to gotta think about this. <laughs> it's like, so but I, at least, he, at least he said that, you know. Yeah, at least he yeah. Said, Whoa, I need to, you know, contemplate this idea. Yeah, and then the Ooh. questions start coming up, and I imagine a lot of people because the the people would be going down the checklist. People are going, okay, uh, what about globes? What about the satellites? What about <laughs> the rockets? What about people would be going through all these things? It's like, what about all these things? They'd be the phone. The phone system would probably break down because there'd be so many questions that would be all the data that would be transmitted back and forth people searching for answers. Unlike a Kim Kardashian picture, that ne revelation would actually probably break the internet. It probably <laughs> would. Definitely. Well, it would break it down for a while because people yeah. would just be so hungry for the information and it would be not necessarily a negative thing. It would just be this desperate searching. Where is it? Where YouTube would break almost immediately. <laughs> Because I've had this conversation with a couple of, uh, with, uh, with Nathan and, and Patricia. Uh, um, there are people who you mention it to them and they go, oh, right, okay. You know, you go out, you're out somewhere and they go, oh, okay, so what, are you having a latte? And they just completely blase about it. Yeah. And I'm thankful for those people because in this <laughs> event, you know, those guys are going to say, all right, I'm going shopping, do you need anything? You know, people will be in a freaking yeah. trance and go, yeah, I need some loo roll. But, you know, <laughs> I'm thankful that there are these people. Farmers will be saying, yeah, okay, I've got to plant my potatoes. You know, there'll yeah. be people that are like, yeah, okay, fine. I, I keep thinking of the um, uh, that the movie Independence Day with Will Smith. There would be people that, that, that say now, it's like, oh, who cares, right? Like Max Egan, who cares what shape the world is, blah, blah, you know, Gaza, all these things. But but like when, when Will Smith walked out his home and like the entire city knew about that there were aliens, you know, out in front of him except for him. And he's going reading through his newspaper and he's looking around, he's going, something something's wrong, something's going on here. That's where these people would come in because even though they may not care, 99 out of 100 people would care. In fact, they would care a great deal. It would be the only story uh, that, that anyone would talk about for years. Somebody yeah. needs to put together a Flat Earth Awakening Kit or an instruction go. guide, yeah. and it would be what needs to be handed out or you know given to somebody uh, via their email of what they need before they start investigating the Flat Earth. You're going to need two weeks off work. You're going to need a whole supply of food and water to not <laughs> leave in your house. You better be well rested because you're not sleeping. That's actually <laughs> and make really sure to tell all your friends uh, that you they need to leave you alone and don't call you because you're not answering the phone. That's a, you know, you, you, it, it, you're saying it kind of in jest, but 
it's a real it's a Sasha would be ideal for I think you know not to volunteer somebody else but <laughs> <laughs> I put it on Sasha a flattering <laughs> awakening kid's excellent I will yeah. take that on I will work on it and yeah. roll something out but I think it's worth remembering as well that you know I talk a lot about scientism in interviews and things um but I really do think that we can't underestimate that, that a lot of people that identify as atheists or as part of the secular society, they are zealots. And you can't convert a zealot just by presenting them with rational information because it's not about that. It's just about this desperate belief. And that's why I just think some people are going to reject it because they want to be atheists and they want to believe in the science model that they've been given. And so I think, it, like Antonio was saying, I think it is probably going to be a slower progression where the people that are more open are going to kind of get on board, but you'll still have those people that are firm believers in, in scientism. And also, this is what I've noticed as well, and I saw it with myself, um, if you come from that background, then you don't automatically make the link between the flat earth and there being a creator of the flat earth. And, and sometimes I'll, I kind of ask Mark, like, well, how, how does that, what happens then? And I have to be reminded, oh, yeah, it's because then people will realize that there's a creator. And even when I talk about it with my friends, I think sometimes that's not a, for people that aren't brought up in maybe the level of, religious messaging that you see in the States, maybe? It's it's just not that much of a direct connection. Yeah. There's also, well with, with, with devout atheists, um, devout atheists, they reject a god that doesn't exist. They reject a bearded god who mutilates, who, um, you know, uh, uh, commits atrocities, who wipes off whole humanities from the earth. This individual, this deity, this this thing doesn't exist, never has. And when when atheists get a hold of the I was atheist before I realized, you know, the the, the flat earth came to me. And then it's like, oh okay, it isn't this thing that we've been told. Everything we've been told is distortion, misunderstanding, or just attempts to understand the world which has then been translated as bona fide proofs. No, it's just translations of, of what people were discussing. So, you know, when, when the atheists who are so devout and so skilled at, at being good without the ethics of a, a, a religious organization, when these people get a hold of the flat earth and realize that, no, the whole idea, the whole God idea is a, is a misinterpretation, you know, is is it's just that's all all it is it's a misinterpretation that they've been rejecting god doesn't I heard have geo a shifter yes i heard geo shifter say on a hangout that uh, god uh, god and santa claus are pretty much both the same i don't mean god but the, the the beard like you said the picture we have of god with the beard on the fluffy clouds is just as much of an illusion as the picture we have of santa claus and he doesn't he's have a wife so he's not going to be very happy you know <laughs> the original you know <laughs> Science will, by the way, take the take the biggest hit here. Where this would reverse, if you guys, some of you guys remember the Darwin headline from years ago, where the headline, I think it was in London, said "God is dead." Mm. Yes, uh, in, in the newspapers, this would this would in fact reverse that. And I don't know if the media would take advantage of that. So you know, say "God is alive." I don't think that's probably the headline they're going to run. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, Sasha is also right. By the way, that yeah, it will take some people a while to make the spiritual connection, because they'd be so amazed from the physical side of things. You know, because at first they'll be like, "Wait, I was told my entire life that it was a globe," and once they get past all that stuff, which is why I, you know, one of the clues when I when I made that in the clues, they are hiding God. What you know, I really pushed that down the road because it's not a natural thing. You will run into it eventually. Uh, however, the churches will will jump on that. That that will be the next sermon. 
you know, mm. that they that they run. If if it's disclosed on a Saturday, that will be the sermon on Sunday. And, you know, the the God is God is alive and well. Testify. <laughs> I mean, well, going back to, to flat earth proof for a second though, sometimes yes, yes, I was please. actually just, just just talking about describing concepts to people and some people won't necessarily be open to them, um, but sometimes you can actually be, uh, I mean this literally, at the beach debating this and talking about concepts that you can point out there and then and when I've done this, it doesn't matter whether it be the sun coming through with the light rays or the, the water not falling away from you or whatever it may be that you pick. Um, I know um, uh, allegedly David did a great example of boiling it down that he's got twice the distance across that should be a curve in his letter to, to Neil deGrasse Tyson. But you can you can point all these things out um, and one after the next you just get no, no, no. You know, it doesn't matter what you do. I mean I was drawing a, a diagram in the sand of how the light rays should be absolutely, you know, uh, uh, perpendicular, is that right? You know, all uh, parallel. 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 So it should all be parallel. So I'm drawing this out in the sand because we've got a vast distance to draw it out to point out that they shouldn't be doing what we can see there and then. And they just went, no. <laughs> that, that, that was the end of that conversation. The wall is up. Yeah, yeah. well, you, you know how we have the, the three faces of truth? Mm -hmm. So, you know, violent opposition and ridicule, violent opposition and wide, wide held acceptance. We also have the stages of grief because for a lot of people, they're losing something that they loved, that they, they yeah, space, completely embraced. Man, space. space was cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yes, I was a big sci-fi buff. Yeah, so there, there are these stages, there's the bargaining, all, all the stages of grief apply you know, they, they yeah, also apply. The, yeah, he's absolutely right. The first stage is always denial, and it is always the strongest. And that and that is, and I've told people this fairly recently, and said, look, the only people that are immune from flat Earth are the people that are in denial that will not look at it. That it's not it's not that they look at it and reject it. They just say, yep, I'm not even looking at flat Earth. Uh, so yeah, denial followed by anger followed by bargaining depression and then finally acceptance and uh, and I see that time and time again uh, the people that are the most adamant against flat earth they don't have an argument whatsoever they're just holding on they say no flat earth is dumb here's why and they don't even look at the flat earth side they always you know stick with the globe you know the, you can almost see them hugging it on their side and there's always a globe proof there's for every flat earth yeah. real-world observation that you can present to somebody in a comment, it's back to the circular argument, if you want to call it. There's going to be a really well-thought-out globe proof that can go right underneath that comment. And normally, the globe proof can look more shiny and polished and well-worded. You know, it's been, it's had a lot longer to be thought out, despite the fact that the Earth hasn't actually changed shape. It's yeah. been the same for a very right. long time. And also, the proofs, the, the globe proofs, are uh, usually theoretical. They're not practical. You can't you know, to, to show yeah to show the orbit of the moon to the faces of the moon. You have to remove yourself. You know, lose the horizon and right. it, it's yeah, theor by, theoretical. By the way, real quick, I want I want to get this in just because I don't want to forget it. Which was you know because people say oh you know because we hear this every week oh flat Earth is dead flat Earth is dead. It's like mm. no 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 because when Obama mentioned it last week. I wasn't even thinking that the flat Earth was dead, and I'm watching it, and I had the same sort of feeling of wonder as I did when Neil deGrasse Tyson was dropping the mic on on Comedy Central, and that was he was really direct about it. His words were very, very carefully chosen, and he was speaking. It wasn't like he was speaking at some weird banquet. He was speaking at a group of reporters, you know, telling them, you know, you should report. You know, if you know, if I say, you know, you you guys know the speech it was 20 seconds long. But and then he ended it with that probably you know that science mm -hmm. will probably show that it's round. He didn't say ball or sphere or anything like that. And and we'll say this: he is really good at reading a teleprompter, and I don't think he screwed up a single word. <laughs> right. Also, also... If, if there is anything that is dead, it's the globe. Like yeah. we all know this. You know, it really is. You know, it's it's like you know the 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 embracing the globe and the the rejection when you're. Nine, ten, whatever age you discover that Santa Claus isn't actually real. He's not been watching you every year to see that you're good. And when you discover that, the, you're you're disheartened. You know, it's like oh. And then your parents say, "Well, you still get presents." And then, 
mm-hmm. but there's still that l- sense of loss. It's exactly the same with the globe. There's that sense of loss for people who who are still clinging on to it, who can still fool themselves into thinking that yeah, it really is true. It still is true. Right. That's, let me let me throw something in also. Um, just because you know we may be um, underneath a, some sort of an artificial contract uh, construct, that doesn't necessarily mean overall that space is fake. And the reason I say that is um, some of the things that I've studied, um, getting in a little bit more esoteric material, um, has said essentially that you know there has been these galactic wars, and what happened to Earth was that the Earth was essentially devastated on on the surface. And as a result of that, humanity was moved to a construct that was underground. Um, and now, apparently, from what the channelers, and you can you know take this however you want to take it, but, but what some of the channelers are saying, and also some of the ancient texts are saying, that yes, we were put underground because the, the surface of the Earth was uh, devastated, but now we're entering a point where the surface of the earth has been repaired and we are slowly being brought back up to the surface. Now, if that's true, and and one of the things they also said is that in this construct, everything has been replicated as it was on the surface of the earth. So we may be looking at a a simulation of space um, that was on the surface, which may or may not be true, but if we are brought out, um, maybe brought to the other side of the dome, who's to say that space isn't actually there in some form? Or it could be something even more fantastic than that. But uh, I'm just throwing that in from some old esoteric, you know, uh, material that I've read. So, you know, we really don't know what's on the other side of the, the dome. Um, you know, it, we've been told it's waters, but waters could represent many things. Uh, I personally think the waters uh, could represent the ether. Uh, you know, that everything is created out of. Or it could actually be, you know, actual H2O. It's hard to say. But um, I mean, the point is, is I always thought, you know, well, if you get to the end of the universe, what's on the other side? And I'm thinking the same thing, the same context with with uh, Earth now. If, if that truly is a firmament or that's a ceiling or a dome, then what's on the other side? So, yeah. you know. Yeah. And the uh, it's funny you mentioned the waters that because I watched uh, one of Brian Mullen's videos just recently where he was talking and he brought it up in in passing but I I don't think it should be missed and that was he says because he was talking about the atmospheric distortion you know that, that we run into and he goes he goes really the 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 atmosphere we're in now the the air is really just another version of water you know where it's it's not that much different I mean H2O is you know it's hydrogen and oxygen but really we're we're swimming in a nitrogen oxygen environment you know the everything else you know yeah if you went into a vacuum that's different but uh, so you know could we be could you know could we what we're breathing now is just another version of water you know yeah. what they call water there's a joke like that where uh, a fish two fish are walking by another excuse me swimming by and uh, Another fish passes and says, hey, boys, how's the water? And they say, great. And then they look at each other and say, wait, what's water? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, one thing that Brian Mullen said that, that absolutely blew me away, and I, I definitely want to have him on Globusters at some point, mm-hmm. but he was talking about uh, the E equals MC squared formula um, and talking about light and mass. And he goes, well, you know, if we're dealing with waves and we're dealing with energy um, and that this essentially has no mass, then that kind of completely destroys the entire E equals MC squared formula. And I thought about that for a while. It's like, oh, my God, he's right, you know? So I kind of want to expand on that because that was absolutely incredibly profound. Yeah, that man is losing a lot of sleep. (laughs) He is creating creating a lot of stuff. I mean, him on his whiteboard, it's scary to watch sometimes because you can see see the gears just flying in his head and – I don't know what he's going to find next. It's, it's great, great stuff. And I think this ties into what we're talking about, about the people that are cracking. Um, I think that some people haven't processed all the loss of the globe earth system and their attachments to it. And so they think that they have, and they're all excited to join the flat earth movement. And they put out their little videos, they, you know, and then I think then there's like a quiet period. 
And I think that's when they're going through the loss, and that's when they're cracking up a little bit. <laughs> it could be. It could be. And we haven't really lost space. We have it exactly where it always was. Uh, well, the space that we think is space with the Star Trek and Star Wars and all these other movies, it's exactly where it always was, in the sci-fi department of your Amazon uh, or wherever it is that you purchase or download movies from. So it's still right there. You can go yeah. visit any time you want, just like you always have. I mean, I can I can watch... I've, I've got a pretty good imagination, so I can watch Star Trek and Star Wars and everything. Those those movies don't bother me. It's that second level, the ones that are tied to us directly. You know, mm -hmm. like movies of our near future, like Mission to Mars or Red Planet or Gravity or Interstellar. Uh, those I have a hard time with now. Yeah, lots but, of programs. But, but I will watch them and see what can be simulated. That's fun. I well, that's a fun idea. Right. I was going to say, NASA sort of misrepresented space. I mean, I'm stealing Christie's words here, but it's very true. NASA sort of misrepresented what we have over there. Yeah. But I like Bob's uh, approach, and that is that we don't really know. If this is a simulation, then it may be simulating something that obviously doesn't work the way we're told that this works. Um, but So you don't have to throw it away if, if you don't want to. I think you can still hold on to the idea that on the outside of the dome or behind the simulation or I don't know like I think if, if you're if you need it that badly yeah. there are I, ways to interpret it yeah I had people that were telling asking me if I was trying to kill astrology early on and I said astrology no I, I go the stars and, and the planets are just one gigantic clock system what makes it up we have no idea uh, just because I say they aren't millions of light years away doesn't mean the clock system is any less relevant. If you want to tie it to horoscopes and it works for you, then hey, great, latch on to it. I'm, it's still there. Well, we've had a really fun discussion of these things, but I'd like to go to Q&A, which has so much stuff in it, and we've been ignoring it. Is everybody okay with me just reading questions that are random that probably address things we talked about a while ago? I'll just read them out, and we could... You know, comment or, you know, nod our heads or whatever, I guess. Here we go. First one is Robin Poe who says, It's getting to the point that whenever I see a video that looks negative towards someone, I don't look at it. I'm tired of the negative attitudes. Enough already. That's been plussed up 15 times. So thanks, Robin. Ravenlock says, select that question here. What I don't get is that these negative videos are talking about the happenings in the background, but yet they don't approach their accusers first to try to come to at least a compromise slash resolution. Isn't that what being a truther really is? Very interesting. All right, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah and by the way, if anyone has a problem with any of the stuff that I do, and I mean that, my email's at the end of every single video I make, or at least I try. So please email me before making a video about me, please. I did. I I wanted to I always kind of say that when I did my video uh, about the incident uh, I did <laughs> run it by Mark first before posting it I sent him a message saying here's a draft of a video that I am making I am angry and hurt please let me know your feedback and he did yep. and then we talked about it and he was like oh, I don't know and so I think yeah I just wanted to clear that up. <laughs> yes, exactly. Address address us personally. Email any of us, and if you've got a question, now sometimes a question will come about something like I got one today that said you need to do a video showing your eyes close up to prove that you're not a reptilian. Now that kind of an email, I'm not going to respond to. I won't dignify it with a response. Um, if anybody wants to believe I'm a reptilian, feel free. Feel free. Can I Enjoy. can I just can I just say something, uh, of course. Uh, Patricia? Okay, so. <clears throat> To anybody listening who's not already familiar with us, we really are the way that we appear to be. We none of us are actors. I, I'm really a little bit stupid, and I lose words <laughs> sometimes. You know, we really are how we appear to be. This isn't a facade. We, if if you feel that one of the of the panel is more approachable than another, then approach that one. You know, we we are. This is this is us. So yeah, I agree. In fact, if you don't want to approach uh, Orphan Red directly about something, I'll just pick on Orphan Red. Um, then I uh, then mention me. Um, uh, you know, message me and ask me a question. Uh, same thing. If you don't want to approach me about something, then talk to Nathan. We the talk to each that, other. The the only one that should be avoided is David Wise, the guy at, at the all start. cost. Yeah. Avoid him. <laughs> one other thing is is we are all using our real names. Um, yes that we're not using aliases or anything like that. I don't use my last name, however I am on Facebook, and uh, you know it's been posted a few times. 
Um, so we're real people, you know? Well, I don't use my real name because I've had experiences in the past that have taught me to be maybe overly cautious, maybe not. Nobody mm. knows. Uh, so, but also because my name is horrible. Um, and so <laughs> I, I actually use Sasha with my friends, with people at school work, and so, yeah. Well, for, for a woman, that's, I think, more acceptable, honestly. Yeah, I've I've heard her name. I can I can kind of vouch for it. Sasha is actually better than the other. <laughs> <Raymond>. <laughs> All right, Sorry, we're gonna Sasha. go on. <laughs> Sorry, I like it. I like it personally, but you know full well that it's not. It's, it's no what, good. It's what's not wrong with look? I'll, I'll I'll say it. It's Cuthbertina. There's nothing wrong with Cuthbertina. <laughs> 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 um, let's see. Let's go. We've got event skeptic. I'm going to try to get through these questions. Who says it's the ego, not the flat Earth? And he was probably referring to something earlier that was being talked about. Why people are going crazy? It's their ego, ego issues. Like, and I think that Antonio, you addressed that as well uh, earlier about people's egos. Um, we've got this one that I'm selecting and getting in the queue here, and it is from Humana Story, who says, it wasn't Max, it was his mannerisms, not his mouth. Hell, I've got a foul mouth at times too, but I'm not rude to the person. He was just rude and disrespectful. It wouldn't have been an issue, his sailor's mouth, if he was at least morally respectful. In some ways I agree with that, but yet we have to take him as who he has presented himself as. And if we're telling other people in the Flat Earth community to be nicer, we also have to be nicer as well. So yeah, yeah. yeah. We're just e we're just going to all ease up on people who are against us within the community and outside of the community to help right. the community in the end. I ha I I have a problem with people that are using the f word every other word, but uh, I do understand that sometimes that's in the culture. You know. Yes. Like Antonio said. Yeah, but it, like with uh, Martin Nitschke, I love the guy, but he it, in English we say he f's and jeffs. Okay, he swears a lot. When he's talking, it's just the way he expresses. But when he was on your show, Patricia, he was mindful of it, you know. Mm -hmm. He felt welcome, so he was very mindful, and he didn't swear, you know. So. And he has a very good heart, and you can feel yes. it. I'm sure Max yeah. Egan has a good heart, too. But he yes. wasn't exhibiting his good heart on Globebusters. I, I'm sure he's got one, or he wouldn't be working as hard as he does to expose truths and help humanity. Go ahead, Mark. Real quick before you go to your next one. Uh, it, I can only tell you from from my side, the Christian community doesn't like spreading videos uh, that have a lot of profanity in them. Uh, in fact, the more Christian they are, the less they like spreading them because they still believe in you know a Disney-esque AOL type of world. And uh, they they won't expose their kids to them. I'm just saying that. So if you want your video to get hit all the demographics, try to keep your swearing at least to somewhat of a minimum. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Event skeptic had an additional comment who says, "Bob, you're a great man, and I'm thankful to have you on the team." That's nice. Uh, well, thank you, Event Skeptic. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's Ronnie, Event Skeptic. Yep. The Flat Earth Reality has a comment here who says, there's only a few Flat Earth video makers spreading the hate. Literally only a few, but it's completely disgusting. They should try to wake folks up instead of trying to subvert us. The five to ten people that do it all have low, low sub counts anyway. Primarily, indeed, that's true. Um, some do have higher sub counts. Um, Humana Story says, I respect people who speak their minds. I don't respect rude people. You don't have to be rude to speak your mind. Um, up next, we've got a great show. I think that all the panel members and the chat room together made this podcast great. Thanks. Ukdina Walker says, Max got pissed because Mark didn't watch his video. Sigh. Then Max went on to berate Jaren in his videos. Then he said he never watched Jaren's videos and he only read the comments. So, yeah, we addressed that earlier. I'll watch it if it's pro. Uh, if it's pro flat Earth, I absolutely will will watch it. Just saying. I was okay. literally when when I was watching the show, I was literally throwing my arms up, going. Oh, yeah. In chat, that's just, what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, just where we were typing like no or oh my goodness, you know the these kind of comments uh, to what Max was saying, but there were very few people who were super attacking him in the chat. But yeah, somewhere. So. Someone should someone should make a drinking game and play that interview back. And every time he says circular, you take a drink and you'll <laughs> die from alcohol poisoning. Pretty sure. Uh, we've got another comment here. This is Mark Sargent. Is super smart to share truths the way you do. You're a bright and gifted man at what you don't don't ever give up. If we could only learn from Mark's honesty, he's always so well spoken, always a blessing, which is nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and someone else says Mark kindness is seen by some as weakness. 
we know its strength and goodness. Uh, Where are my comment. guns? I gotta get yeah, my yeah. gun. <laughs> we have another comment. A collection of really nice people. So excited. These comments probably started b prior to the show. D Lee's thirty eight. Oops, his comment just disappeared. Let me grab it again. Uh, well, I'll get it later. Oh, there it is. Oh, wait, no, it isn't. Sorry. Patricia. Um, Patricia. Move quickly. Would, mm -hmm. would you address the fact that you 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 probably won't get to all the comments oh, just yes. for people that have made a comment and and won't have it addressed? Yes. Yes. Well, thank you for addressing it for me. There's. I can never get to all the comments. I can. I have a bunch of emails I'll probably never get to during this show, and I apologize to anybody who I told I would read your email today. It'll be next Monday. Um, we've got uh, the Flat Earth Movement, and I'll get back to those people whose who's, uh, e who's messages went farther on the list as we were just digressing. Uh, the Flat Earth Movement says, uh, selecting question, please wait. Uh, it's sort of not working. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Um, he says, banana hammock, and that's an inside joke between him and Mark. He says, hi, Patricia, I thought I'd send you this comment to cheer up this live stream. When there's a right time in the live stream, please, can you read out my email that I sent you and Mark? Could the Flat Earth Union be created? Yes, the Flat Earth Movement wants I, to create a union. I, and if, I can read it tomorrow, but you go, I can read it on my show tomorrow. But, yes, uh, but you, you go read ahead. it on your show tomorrow, Mark, that would be great. And then yeah. I'll read it again because we've done this show and it's taken up a lot of our time. Yeah. Uh, Flat Earth Movement, I promised you that I'd read it during this show, but I will read it next Monday and Mark's going to put it on his Strange Worlds show on TFR tomorrow being Tuesday. So yeah. thank you, Flat Earth Movement. And what, what's his real that. name? Do you remember his name? Um... Yes, but right now it's not coming to me. Young, Sorry. young, Brit young British kids. One of our yes, young. Yes, and he's really, friends. really good, and he changed his channel name recently. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's good see. Good guy, I like your heads. Uh, D Lee's thirty-eight says, "LOL, Globusters, the boat trip that me makes me take go down memory lane." So he's talking about the, uh, the boat and how somebody had basically spray painted the boat. Yeah, it's weird how we've not really been in Flat Earth that long, but we already have these old stories. Like, remember Jaren's boat? Hey, I was just <laughs> remember glad back that, when I was a kid. Jaren's boat. I was boat. glad that boat didn't catch fire or blow up or something. Or... It's, uh, it's pretty true. It's pretty true. It's pretty great. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Okadina Walker says, "Go, Patricia. I see your warrior shield, woman." Trying, trying. Another comment. There is no leader, and everyone needs to lead and cast away fear and do what makes you f makes you you. And love is the way. Kumbaya, my love. Kumbaya. No, no, no. Yes, yes. actually, it's, yes. It's echoing what it's echoing what Martin Leeds said. You know, just let your heart lead. Yeah. You know, and, and this echoes what Bob said as well. You know, the, yes. the electromagnetic pulsed wave energy from the heart is much, much bigger, much more expansive than that of the brain. Yes, so true. Huh. I'm trying to skip around the comments at the moment to try to get comments from people who were not uh, mentioned earlier. So if somebody's noticed, I don't know if you, anybody can even see that I'm going through comments and selecting a few, and that's to give a person who's already made three comments that I'm just taking in order, not being that they're hogging the show. You know what's sad that I have to explain this? There's nothing I'm doing here at all, <laughs> ever. It's a conspiracy. Read the next comment. <laughs> you shut up. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rich B.O.B. Oh. right? <gasps> Heaven forbid. If it helps, though, it'll come up later. The Bible makes it clear that when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, God's Word is written on your heart. And so when you're filled with the Word, God is in your heart. Right? Amen. Uh, and we have a, an additional comment from Event Skeptic who says, Bob, Jesus said, I'm, I am in the Father as you are in me and I am in you. There you go. We've got uh, Kofu here. Uh, who writes, his name is Paul Green as well, and he may subscribe to his channel, or you may not, but you really should, he's got great videos. Um, uh, he writes, Globusters, watching now stats blow away channels with uh, 200k subs. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> who's uh, who's doing, who's listening in, or watching in the, in the live chat? Very true. Love uh, I'm always excited, yeah, me too. I'm always excited to, uh, to when Globusters comes up. Just, chat is so fun. It's so fun and so friendly, uh, you know. It's it, and then there's some elements in there that aren't that friendly. But we we self police. I've noticed lately, even if there's no moderator, I don't even know if there's a moderator. But sometimes, what the best thing to do is just ignore that person that's in there creating trouble, be they a flat earther or a a a globalist, and 
they go away because yeah, we, they want we have, attention. We always have moderators, but yeah, so yeah, I've just inherited one. Thank you. So a shout out goes to Gav. Thank you very much. Yep, Gav yes. is awesome. Thank you, Gav. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. A big thank you from me. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kofu again has uh, mentioned something that's going to make me look something up on my phone and mention this as well. Uh, uh, I'll mention what he had to say in a moment, but I do want to let people know that I'm having a gathering on Earth Day, which is Friday, April 22nd. And Kofu, Paul Green, is suggesting we uh, hashtag it, hashtag Flat Earth Day. And uh, he says, reveal the lies, share your best evidence, hashtag research Flat Earth. So if you're going to be doing some um, Earth Day uh, posts on your Facebook or social any social media, just put Flat Earth Day, hashtag Flat Earth Day in it, which would be great. And I'm doing a Flat Earth Day event, and I live in Houston, Texas. It's the first Texas Flat Earth meetup, and as I said, it's Friday, Earth Day, the 22nd, which is now officially for all of us Flat Earth Day. And it's at a place called La Grilla Restaurant in Houston in River Oaks, and it's at 6 p.m. Central Time, and I'm providing free vegan food, you have to pay for your own drinks, alcoholic or not, and there's free parking, but if you want a valet, uh, you're going to have to pay five bucks for that or something along those lines. And I'm going to be broadcasting Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes from the event. And people are already RSVPing, and if you do want to come to this event on Flat Earth Day in Houston, Texas, you have to RSVP because at some point I'm going to have to cut it off. I, a guy already bought a plane ticket to come here from Florida, so it's getting some attention. Some, a lot of people, Flat Earthers, are going to be there, and as in, today I'm not going to do it. Maybe next Monday I'll read some of the names of who is going to be there. Right now we don't really have enough time to do that without you know, having all of these... Uh, Rob, Robin uh, Poe is trying to get one going questions. in the Northwest in the Seattle area, just so you yeah. know, which yeah. I may be attending. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, if, it, if we could have different... I mean, it's a great time to have other communities do meetups on the same day, yeah. April 22nd, right? Yeah. 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 Sasha, you can't come down. Just just saying. Sorry, you're not invited. <laughs> nah. And if so, and if, uh, you know, just make sure you guys lay off the Masonic hand signs if you ever meet. <laughs> yeah, really. This we, time, come on, guys. For the we, team. Have a, we have a ton of flat earthers in Colorado. I think that'd be great for us to do. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, I'm doing this thing at this restaurant and doing the vegan food to, to push my vegan agenda. No, it's great food. You're not going to be eating twigs. And I just, I'm doing it to uh, build community. To build community. That's what it's all about. Uh, it's, it's not doom and gloom. It's flat earth. It's meeting other people. You may live in a place where you're the only flat earther. I mean, as Nathan said before, his wife, who he loves dearly, Paul, is not a flat earther, but she helps him do what he does on his channel. She's united with him, and some of us don't have that. They don't have a we don't have a significant other or somebody in our life who is going to help us do what we do, or is going to even support us, uh, you know, mentally with our flat earth journey. We don't have friends we can talk about it with. So these kind of meetups, it, it builds extended family. Yes, we still love our own family and our own friends who are not flat earthers, but getting some flat earth friends. What a moment that's going to be when we all meet. You know, it's going to be great. Uh, a couple other statements here. We've got Carl Brooks writing, I think that most people won't entertain Flat Earth because most people don't want their world rocked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I mean, maybe I was ready for my world to be rocked. Maybe we were all ready for our world to be rocked. It could be pretty much as simple as that. Uh, we, I know I had always thought lots of things don't make sense, and then I started finding out about the hoax events and, you know, 9-11 and all this, and then little by little, everything was not making sense. And I kind of felt like, even if I was part of normal society, I owned a business, had friends, loved my family, I did feel like this world didn't make sense. And Flat yeah. Earth made things sort of fall into place. Do you guys agree with that? Exactly. Yeah. I think I think all of us have had our world rocked simply by researching conspiracies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 9-11 was unbelievable. Sandy Hook was unbelievable. And after a while, you just kind of expect it. Um, and so I think when people... Uh, research conspiracies, or at least we raise their awareness to them, then um, they're, they're not going to be so shocked to to learn that the world is flat and we've been lied to about the very place we're living at also. Yeah. yeah. There's also an, uh, another element. So, sorry, uh, Sasha, do you, do you want to go ahead? Go ahead. Oh, okay, I was going to say, there's also another element for people who have been looking into conspiracies. Um, the conspiracies are dark. They're all There's always a really dark element to them. The flat Earth 
is not like any other conspiracy. It's not a dark conspiracy. In fact, it puts light. It actually shines light onto the darkness in the other conspiracies. And I, yes, I was going to say that I always kind of, when people ask me, were you into conspiracy theories? And I say, yes, I was. Um, but when I really think about it, I was into conspiracies since I was little and, oh, the UFOs. Um, but it's actually through science that I think that's what prepared me for the flat earth because science, physics, it does show the intangibility of reality and it does show, so I think that there, there is that community out there of the hardcore science physics people that are also going to be at that cusp of being ready because that's kind of where science is leading anyways to these ideas that things are not what we think that they are. Yes, we've been, in. we've been, uh, sorry, uh, I was I'm just going to say, we've, we've been through physics and, and science. We, we have to be aware that there's two sides to physics. There's the experimental physics, which has a lot more to do with engineering and actual practice. And then there's a the theoretical. They've been flipped over, so the, the theorists now conjure up ideas and ask the the. Uh, the the other physicists to test them rather than the other way around which was ex you know uh, testing the real world and then developing a theory when one was not easily available um, so we have to keep that in mind in the world of physics but the world of physics and astronomy has been look making us see and look in the wrong direction now even though the world of physics has been kind of you know forcing us along a certain avenue even though that's the case there are still been discoveries, real, concrete, true discoveries through experimental physics that tell us the world is not impermeable. Reality is not impermeable. It is permeable. We can have an effect. It, it's porous, as it were. Things can bleed through from one dimension to the other. It's, it's not fixed and rigid. Um, let's see. Ukdina Walker says that American Indians uh, in the southwest have always said that humans have lived underground for different times by necessity and that belief system includes beings inside the earth helping out so so much we don't know about that at least I didn't know that um, so many other comments here I trying to get one that's not by somebody who had already commented uh, here's somebody Dawn of Light writes my mom just tolerates the flat earth but she thinks it would make the biggest blockbuster movie of all time <laughs> go figure it would wouldn't it yeah, I yeah it would. I've been working on the first hour of a screenplay for that thing and I think it'd be fantastic but it kind of has to happen I didn't know that that's you should go I mean it shouldn't be just a, a you should go you should write it finish it I uh, probably should Yes. All right, maybe we'll share it with us. Just Get us, him. none of the other people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll keep it amongst ourselves. Don't tell. You me. can read it. Uh, you can read it just here on the Secret Show because nobody's listening at no. all. <laughs> yeah, nobody's listening. Uh -huh. Get on uh, TV to help you because he's brilliant at these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's not bad. Um, another comment here, Patricia, being awake does not mean people are awake in every area. They know the lies in the Illuminati and on and on, yet they've done no inner work. They've given the ego full reign and pushed the spirit aside. And she's referring to people who are causing a lot of disruption within the flat earth. Yeah, that's probably quite true. We all need to work, do inner work. You know, there's nobody here who's more evolved than the other. But, you know, there are some people who are laying down in the dirt when they should be trying to elevate themselves. And, yeah. hey, you know what? I don't hate them either. I don't. I turn the other cheek. That's my philosophy no. on them. I don't uh, hate them either. I agree with you, Patricia. I don't hate them either. And and uh, in fact, I would gladly accept apologies, and I would much rather be in a state of harmony with them than than uh, at each other's throats. And by the yes. way, Ukdina is a very wonderful and wise woman. I really like mm -hmm. her. Yes, she is. Yes. I wish she lived me, next door to me. She's me too. Me amazing. too. I really, I really value her. Yes. And she is alone in her flat earth beliefs with her pets. But, you know? By the way, because I don't think anyone mentioned it, uh, the place where someone spray painted or painted, I think it was hand painted, flat earth and graffiti, that, that was uh, Burnham on Sea. Do you guys know where that is? Yes, it just came back. No, we don't. I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere. In the no, no, it's, I thought it was near. Um, uh, Sus Sussex isn't the right place, is it? 
by a code base. But anyway, it's a town called Burnham on Sea. All right. Don't know. Sounds anyway. like that's in the UK to me. It is in the UK, uh, absolutely. Yes, yes. yes. So you two UK guys don't know where that is? Come on. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to have to look it up. Hang on. Um, Tinfoil Hatter says, it's totally okay for Max Egan to be a jerk, but we're better than that. All right. Fair enough. I guess it's totally okay for anybody to be a jerk, but we all have to act better than that ourselves. And Somerset. Down our... Somerset, okay. It's in Somerset. Right. Uh, we've got Stock Jockey who writes, do you think that NASA gets fully closed down first or that Flat Earth is fully accepted by most on the plane? Thoughts? Ooh, that's flat a Earth one. gets accepted first, I'd say. Anybody else? I agree think? with you. I think yeah. Flat Earth gets accepted first. Yeah. If we were to just march in mass on NASA right now and start tearing bricks out of the walls, we just wind up in jail. That's my thought on it. Um, do you know? Do you know? There's a way that NASA could um, uh, save face by closing shop, just mm -hmm. simply by not receiving funding. Um, it's a way. It's a very easy political way of just closing down NASA. They just don't have the funding. NASA is now going to defer to, you know, Stanford University for research or whatever. I think we, NASA will survive, even if the flat Earth becomes commonly held belief. NASA will survive. What will they do? They will. They do. They. I think NASA heard me and tried to kick me off. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. I my everything went dark here too. But well, we we, we show us live. Yeah, everyone's popping back in. I think okay. Just, yes. Yeah, so, sorry about that. I don't know what the story is. Go ahead. You were saying NASA will survive. Well, yeah, Unlike this uh, hangout. <laughs> well, I think that NASA is interfering. But I think um, if there's a dome, then NASA will then need $20 billion a year to investigate the dome and to figure out, can we get through the dome? If it's a flat plane with pedals, then yeah. NASA will investigate the flat plane. So... I think I, I think they're not going anywhere. <laughs> I don't know, Sasha. Do you think people are going to be that stupid to trust them again with yes, that? Yes, exactly. hundred percent. Yes. That is so sad. <laughs> it is sad. <laughs> you know, we only have a few more minutes, and we're all rejoining after what NASA kicked us off. We'll go conspiratorial on this. And this is, uh, you know, usually there's CGI cats in my show, and I'm well known for the CGI cats. And today we don't have any CGI cats. But I do want to end on a note that's somewhat sad, and then we can say something happy before we close out. Uh, two people have told me about their cats who have died, and somebody sent me a photo. And this is little Tacker, and a guy named Trolley out of Australia lost his beautiful cat and said he'd like me to say bon voyage, little Tacker. And I have. And somebody who's a YouTuber named N-U-R-M-N-D said he lost his cat Boris, flat cat extraordinaire. So we also have a new kitten who was adopted by somebody last week called Flat No Spin. So we've got the sad things and we've got the happy things. Uh, anybody else have any parting words so we could bring the mood up after talking about people losing their beloved pets? Well, this was really fun. It was really nice to have the opportunity to talk with everyone. And I, I'm loving that we're doing this more often and that I'm seeing it happen in videos more often. Just these bigger groups coming together and, and groups, different factions. It's nice. And so uh, yeah. I'd just like to say thank you for inviting me to participate. Thanks to all f to, to, for coming on the show. It's been wonderful. And it, this really is Flat Earth Friendship. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. Thanks to Antonio and Nathan, Norfin Reds, and Bob Zanadude, and also Mark Sargent, who accidentally left the call and has not returned. Hmm, oh, what is he doing? Conspiracy, conspiracy. Um, thanks to all who were in the Q&A, and I'm Patricia Steer, without my CGI cats, unfortunately. And from all of us, goodbye, and keep it flat and friendly.